Hi, I'm Nancy Brown. I've been with Mimic for 30 years now, and I'm going to show you how to make the Hungarian double deck pastry. I've already measured out my flour and sugar and all my dry ingredients. I sifted them, and then I made them into a batter, and it has to be made the day before because you have to chill it. But don't forget to take it out of the refrigerator because it takes quite a while for it to soften so you can roll it. The dough, it's like any other dough, you have to flour your board. Flour on the rolling pin is just as important as flour on the board. What I do is I roll it and then I set my pan on it and push it around to see my corners. And then I trim it and patch the corners. And you put it in the pan. nuts, the walnuts, you can now get them so that they're all even, little pieces like that. They're already chopped. And that has to be mixed with a half cup of white sugar. And don't worry about mixing this too much because the sugar is going to go to the bottom anyway. So this is kind of a you guess. This is not an exact science. You do the same thing again and just stack it on top. I have a habit of spreading it out pretty much into the shape that I usually am going to roll it, whether it's cookies or brownies. One thing about this dough that I found that is very helpful does patch nicely. Don't use all of the jam in these. Use measure out two pounds because the first time I thought, well, what's what is a couple more ounces going to make a difference? It does. I had my whole oven messed up with apricot jam. It takes two pounds. I mix, I stir this because it spreads easier if it's been stirred. And I go all the way to the corners. And even though it isn't baked, it's beginning to look pretty good. There's no science in this either. Top with remaining nuts and then top with the third portion. This is a real rich dough. See, it, it's quite pliable. It really works well. And you can see as I roll it, I'm trying to get my shape pretty much the shape of the pan. Now, do you understand what I'm doing here when I'm putting this on here? I'm putting a dent in the dough so that I'm sure that my corners are up. See them? And then we'll cut to the outside of that dent because there's a little flare. This is floured so that the dough doesn't stick to it. Not bad, huh? That's it. Middle of the oven, and it says it to bake it for uh, 25 to 30 minutes. All right. I set that for three to 15 minutes. I learned working under a chef that no oven, there isn't an oven that bakes evenly all the way around. He said, bake it half of the time, turn it around, and bake it the rest of the half time. I've also learned 
and this is through just experience, bake it a little longer so it'll brown a little bit more. It's more appetizing when it's, it has a little bit of color to it. Um, it'll cut easier, uh, has better flavor. Don't short your baking time. Don't burn it, but don't short your baking time. Now, do you see the difference? See how much healthier that looks? When I serve this, I serve it in fairly small pieces, about yay square, because it is very, very rich, but it adds a lot to a cookie tray. It's wonderful because it makes a full cookie sheet. And what I do is I cut it in half this way, and then I cut it in quarters this way, and then when they're ready to be served, I cut them in pieces about like this, and you can get little papers at Christmas time because you you want such small pieces because it's so rich, but it adds to a cookie tree beautifully. I want to wish all of you a happy holiday. I hope you enjoy making the pastry, and I'm sure you're going to love it as much as my family does. So have a good holiday and happy new year.